Thank you very much, Professor Maurice. Uh, at first, I uh, thank all the organizers, uh, organizers of this symposium, especially uh, Mrs. Jamal Moon and my friend Professor Mahmoud Khilij. Uh, and uh, also, I thank all the audience here. Uh, I didn't uh, uh, expect so many people interested in Ibn al-Arabi and uh, it is a good uh, news for us that uh, research on Ibn al-Arabi. My title is Inter-Religious Dialogue uh, Ibn al-Arabi and Maester Ejhar. I have compared two great mystics, one from Christian side, Mr. Eckhart, and uh, the other, Ibn al-Arabi. Uh, this article is concerned with dialogue among religions in general and between Islam and Christianity as the greatest and most popular Abrahamic religions in particular. It should be noted first that it is not religions that enter into dialogue, but religious people. For unlike debate, dialogue is aimed at changes at result and uh, that result from attempts to understand one another. It is evident that it is not religions and civilizations that will change, but rather religious and civilized people whose understandings of culture and religion will change or evolve, and thus pave the way to mutual understanding. Currently, in the great global village, religions in general and Abrahamic religions in particular are facing on the one hand attacks which are not aimed at particular religions but the essence of religiosity and spirituality among which secularism, modernism and postmodernism are neither the last and nor the worst attacks. On the other hand, those religions whose stated purpose is to guide and save humanity need to find solutions for moral, psychological, and spiritual problems and anomalies with which humanity today is faced. The issue of fanatic religious wars to the extreme of savagery which we witnessed being committed by human beings in the 20th century is another problem faced by religions, although it is not specific to the contemporary world and has a long history behind. If one succeeds in finding a single essence for religions, in general, and for Abrahamic religions in particular, a dialogue between religions based on that essence can be employed both to strengthen the united front of religions against the attacks made in the modern world and as a step toward cooperation in solving the problems of humanity as well as a background against which religion, religious conflicts may be attenuated. At the same time, since the victory of Islamic revolution and because of some other events in recent decades resulting in the combination of Islam with political issues on the political scene as well in the media Islam is regarded as an actual danger for the present human culture and civilizations. 
Therefore, this dialogue is now more than ever necessary for Muslims. Finding a single essence for religions. As the last major world religion, Islam continually compares itself with other religions and more than any other opens windows for dialogue and addresses in particular the followers of other Abrahamic religions I mean the people of the scripture Ahlul Kitab as the basis for this dialogue Islam refers to the same thing that we consider to be the essence of religion and the essence has to do with faith, belief and content and not with the act and form. Allah Allah Ta'ala قُلْ يَا أَحْلَ الْكِتَابِ تَعَالَوْ إِلَى كَلِمَةٍ سَوَاءٍ بَيْنَنَا وَبَيْنَكُمْ أَلَّا نَعْبُدَ إِلَّا اللَّهِ وَلَا يَتَّخِذْ بَعْزُنَا بَعْزًا أَرْبَابًا مِنْ دُونِ اللَّهِ and also God said, وَلَا تُجَادِلُوا أَحْلَ الْكِتَابِ إِلَّتِي بِالَّتِي هِيَ أَحْسَنْ إِلَّا بِالَّتِي هِيَ أَحْسَنْ إِلَّا الَّذِينَ ظَلَمُوا مِنْهُمْ وَقُولُوا آمَنَّا بِالَّذِي أُنزِلَ إِلَيْنَا وَأُنزِلَ إِلَيْكُمْ وَإِلَاهُنَا وَإِلَاهُكُمْ وَاهِدٌ وَنَحْنُ لَهُ مُسْلِمُونَ The kalimatin sabahun baynana wa baynakum The common goal on the basis of which religions can enter into dialogue is God and belief in Him. Thus, one refers to a religion here which is the heart of divine law and lies behind the apparently different forms of all divine laws. This single essence not only paves the way for dialogue but satisfies the contemporary human as well. It is this very essence that is mingled with human nature and has its roots its roots in the human soul. It can be reached through friendship, Valaya al Valaya, which is personified in Christianity as the Jesus Christ and has a high place in Islamic mysticism, especially in Fusus al Hikam of Ibn al Arabi. Hence, in the dialogue between religions, one should look to Religion, religious mysticism for according to some scholars of all kind of human thought mysticism is almost always and everywhere the same and that's why others have regarded mysticism as a solution to today's problems claiming never before in history was it more urgent urgent for all of us to learn the language of the mystics than in our time when division threatens to destroy us the mystics of every tradition speak a language that unites also it is claimed that mysticism is the same in all ages and in all places timeless and independent of history, it has always been identical. East and West and other differences vanishes here. I omit something to not lose the time. Religious tolerance. Religious tolerance is very important for Ibn, Ar Ibn al Arabi's thought. On the one hand, Islam finds a more uh, consonant ground for dialogue with Christians. Also, there are many prophetic hadiths in Islam traditions reported of the Jesus Christ, and this again is a sign of a spiritual aspect in Christianity which are confirmed by Islam. 
On the other hand, Christianity commons tolerance and love towards other nations. So, it is the time of um, tolerance. Uh, we see that in the Crusades, uh, when Christianity, uh, Christian people and uh, also Muslims were in war to each other, in the same time, we find Ibn al-Arabi and Eckhart. It is at the time of these uh, crusades that the greatest Christians and Muslims mystics appear and open windows to dialogue between religions, appealing the essence of religion. Yes. Even with respect to four, Ibn al-Arabi, I say that the most important difference between Islam and Christianity is Trinity. Maybe it is better to not to read from the paper. But Ibn al-Arabi says uh, that, uh, um, he says, but it may be hoped that the people of the Trinity, Ahlul Tasdis, because of the state of being odd, which is hidden in the Trinity will be saved, for odd is among the attributions of the one. They are therefore monotheists through the Tawhid of combination. And it is to be hoped that they will be covered by combined mercy. It is likely that the people of Trinity, Ahlul Taslis, will be included among the monotheists because they hold to this oddness in God and not because they hold to the oneness of God. I found them, Ibn Arabi says, I found them in this way through intuition or through al-kash and I was not able to make a distinction between monotheists and the people of Trinity. Even with respect to form, Ibn Arabi does not blame Christians, but rather tries to find some reasons for this and thinks that these some forms are to be found in another form in Islam. Ibn Arabi Ibn al-Arabi's tolerance towards Christianity results from his general approach to the various ideas about God, al ittisaul al-Ilahi. He believed that God, although he will not be forcibly constrained, uh, constrained, constrained, will accept every constraint. Ibn al-Arabi calls this divine expansion, al etasaul elahi According to him, the mystic, he who knows God, it is the meaning of the mystic, possesses this same expansion of the heart, al etasaul elahi in his heart, because he believes in God who has al etasaul elahi because of which he does not easily reject those who speak of God. He says, quotation from Ibn al-Arabi, the fault of unbelief, Ahlul Kash, have been given an all-inclusive overview of all the positions, uh, the tenets, the sects, the doctrines concerning God. They are not ignorant of any of these, some of them. These contradict others, some disagree and some are similar. In every case, the companions of unveiling know from where the doctrine, the sect or the creed is taken and they ascribe it to its side. They offer an excuse for everyone who holds it and do not declare him in error. They do not consider his words to be in a sport, for God did not create any uh, heaven 
nor any earth and what is between them between the two for the unreal and he did not create human being for a sport on the contrary he created him alone in his form hence everyone in the cosmos is ignorant of the whole and knows the part except only the perfect human being who is aware of the whole and Ibn al-Arabi himself is one of them thus the perfect human being has the ability to understand the essence of religion which is the relation with friendship al-Balaya and find a ray of uh, truth in every idea about God this results from Ibn al-Arabi's belief that everyone in being is God and everyone in unveiling is creation thus he find some harmony between the real world and what appears in mystical witnessing in cash right. um, so um, one of uh, Ibn al-Arabi's ideas is the absolute truth and belief truth al-haq al-mutlaq wal-haq al-mu'taqadun bih wal-haq al-mu'taqadun bih he says that God is one but he appears in different ideas in different ways so every person worships his own Lord that he knows him but he denies other Lords that he does not know but the complete mystic knows God in all his forms and accepts him in all his forms so it is something like in Gulshan Raz, Sheikh Mahmoud Shabestari has a verse. He says, Janab Kibriyai la obalist munazah as priyasat khialist. Presence of sovereignty, uh, sovereignty is indifferent, transcendent from imaginary syllogisms. So, God, according to Ibn al-Arabi, God is created in the belief of his bondman, his servant. And for when a person rationally considers God, he creates what he believes in himself through his consideration. Hence, the worship only, uh, hence he worship only a God which he has created through his consideration. He has said to it, be, to his God, be, and it has come into existence. That is why God common us to worship the God through, uh, to the God brought by the messenger, not the God that we have created him or it in ourselves. The God that we must worship is the God that is apparent in the mirror of Rasulullah Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. So, Ibn al-Arabi's idea is different from pluralism. He says that all the beliefs are true in themselves because they are something that have has been uh, have been found in the world, but. Uh, according to Junaid, he says, The color of the water is the color of the container. So we uh, are um, coloring the God in our imagination. But the God that has not any color is the God that is introduced by Muhammad in Quran and in his tradition and so it is like what uh, Mawlana says 
نام احمد نام جمله انبیاست چون که صد آمد نبت هم پیش ماست The name of Ahmad is the name of all the prophets If we have the hundred so the ninety will be near us So Ibn al-Arabi says All the worshippers worship their lords but uh, the complete mystic Al-Insan Al-Kamel worships a god which has not any color so um, at the last I didn't reach Mr. Eckhart <laughs> and I also finished Ibn Al-Arabi maybe it's not been finished uh, so according to Ibn Al-Arabi religions are different but religions are different but the laws uh, religions are one but the laws are different different sharia balakan wahid in the religion uh, the religions are one uh, so different poems from uh, Ibn al-Arabi I have here that shows that uh, he accepts all the religions he uh, opens the room for all the religions but he says all of them are the same um, again it is like Gulshan uh, Raz Shabestari Bobat Nur Nabi Khurshid Azam Gahaz Musa Huweyda Adam. The light of the Prophet is the great sun. It appears sometimes from Moses and sometimes from Adam and other Prophets. And it is the whole idea of Ibn al-Arabi in his Fusus al-Hikam. Thank you very much for your attention.